What does Don't Scream hide off camera from the player during this haunting experience? Don't Scream is a game where if you scream, you lose. Your microphone is tethered to your life. So how does this game work behind the scenes? Like, why is this random woman just walking in place here? Well, there's quite a bit of land to explore in this cursed forest, which involves various locations, including a horrific wreckage of a large plane, a farm, mini-mart, graveyard, and other odd sites. There's a lot to cover, so I hope you enjoy this game-breaking experience and don't scream. As always, let's do a brief recap of just exactly how this game works and how it is typically played. You play as an individual that's holding a video camera, hence our view. A microphone is required for the full experience of this game, and the challenge is to explore this forest for 18 minutes without screaming. The 18 minute timer only goes down if the player moves. Make it so the player has to explore in order to progress. Or they could just jazzercise back and forth in place for 18 minutes. Who am I to judge? Screaming or being too loud will cause your character to drop dead where they stand. If the calibration is done correctly, you should be able to speak quietly though. It's certainly not perfect however. And that doesn't go without saying, the creepy environment this forest provides, along with all the consistent jump scares, will test the player's ability to maintain their composure. You could always just mute your mic too, but obviously that would be too easy. However, for this video, we'll be doing just that. I mean, it's in the name of science! So without any further delay, let's begin. The game starts off with a player standing in the forest, in front of a four-way sign. Likely it's daytime, but just a few yards away is a person that has a knife going through their hand and into the tree. Appearing dead at first, the individual ends up reaching towards us, taking what I believe is their last breath. The person's face is blurred, but changing the game's view allows us to get a better look at them. They have an actual face after all. However, what's more interesting is our character. You'll notice that the player is, well, a pair of floating arms that's holding a pistol. I found this to be curious, because to my knowledge, at no point during normal gameplay do we ever use a firearm of any sort. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I'm aware this is early access of the game, so I'm curious if perhaps they intended on the player having a gun at some point? That aside, we do have some options on where we can head to first, as you can see with this sign. Before deciding though, let's get a view of this forest from the sky. And yeah, this forest is fairly large as you can see. So I'm gonna just head over to here, where there's a visible plane wreckage. Heading down towards ground zero quickly reveals it's a pretty messy scene. Bodies can be found gruesomely hanging from the rear wings of the plane. Bodies that may even look familiar to those of you with a keen eye. These are also the same models that were used in the Siren Head game I covered before. These assets are probably part of a marketplace package that was bought, hence seeing them again here. Anyways, something you're going to notice in this video is that each distinct location in this forest has a pot machine awkwardly by or within it. I cannot say I know exactly why this is the case. There could be a secret meaning behind it, but it could also just be random. Definitely food for thought though. So this plane has clearly seen better days, but outside of the bodies hanging off the plane, we can find a single body of a deceased female within the plane. For being such a large plane, where are the rest of the bodies? Heading towards the cockpit is where things get interesting though. There's a cassette recorder sitting within, which is weird in itself. When turning it on, you hear the following. The audio could suggest that the entity laughing in it is what's responsible for bringing the plane down. Once this audio finishes, as you turn your character around, we get this jump scare. It's a quick interaction and definitely made me jump, but if we go off camera before turning around, we can get a better look at the perpetrator. It appears to be a severely wounded woman with long ghostly flowing hair. Maybe this is the thing we heard in the player. She has a metal bar going through her lower abdomen, which could suggest that she too was involved in a terrible accident. Maybe the plane crash itself. Hard to say. Slowing it down as we turn our character around allows us to get a better look at her, as she horrifically charges towards us. She ends up going through our character and then abruptly disappears. At this point, I decide to make enough noise to die so I can restart with 18 minutes again. I'm thinking this time we're gonna go the opposite direction, towards Homestead. At the starting point, we'll see the sign pointing towards the way we wanna go. You'll see throughout most of this video that we did our exploring during the Halloween update, as there are pumpkins all over the house and even a cute little black kitty on the front porch. It will hiss at you when approaching it, but it's obviously the least of our problems. Walking in, a soccer ball will fly towards us, but what really got my interest is the bathroom on the first floor. There is a disgusting bathtub with green murky water within. The door will shut once you're in the bathroom, and then a living corpse lifts out of the bathtub. 
I can only imagine what the smell of this bathroom would be like. But if we move the camera, we can get a closer look at this body within the tub. It appears to be a lady that has been shackled up at some point before being thrown in this tub. It even appears that she may have been shot too. Huh, I wonder who has a gun? She does disappear, but isn't gone for long. Behind the door, we can see her waiting to do a similar scare that we encountered at the plane. Nevertheless, it's a terrifying experience. Heading up the stairs, we'll see a woman walk by a door just as we're coming up. Entering this room reveals that she's just gone. Behind the scenes though, this looks a bit funny. Because this woman will just walk in place over and over until we activate her to move past the door. If we head into the bathroom up here, we'll find another deathly looking woman. The interaction is brief, but quite intense. Getting a closer look is pretty disturbing. She sort of looks like she could be related to the nun. She's levitating, and as you can see, um, yeah, she's long overdue for a pedicure. However, as I walked through this house, she in a way followed and continued to mess with me. Let's get out of this house though, and seek out another area within this forest. Back at the start, I refer to the sign and head towards the cemetery, no matter how bad of an idea that sounds like. On my way towards the cemetery, I found a random door just sitting by its lonesome self. I tried interacting with this liminal terror, but it appears that I'm unable to do anything with it. So I move on, and not far ahead, I make it to the cemetery. The graveyard consists of, well, as you'd guess, multiple gravestones and mausoleums. As creepy as it all may be, I wasn't able to find any ghosts or creatures hiding in this area. However, there is, yet again, another pot machine sitting right outside of the graveyard. Anyone thirsty? We're gonna head to the mini mart now. So if you pass through the plane wreckage and continue straight, you'll see a lit up sign with an arrow. Following its direction leads us to this mini mart. I think it's fair to theorize that we're possibly dealing with a similar situation like in Land of the Lost. Like the movie, maybe these places we're finding fell victim to a space-time vortex that sucked them into this entire area. It could explain the randomness of this forest. Within the building, there are more bodies hanging from the ceiling, similar to the plane. Perhaps these are more passengers from the plane crash? Going into the back, we can find a locker room where there's another cassette player, just like the one back at the plane. Clicking and on plays the following. I'm not sure what I'm hearing, but the door randomly closes as I'm listening to it. Here comes the jump scare, right? Oh, I guess not. However, it's in the next room, as an entity roars and leaps towards me. Whatever it was, it clearly was having a little too much fun in here, if that's what you want to call it. Coming in here prior to the jump scare reveals this very disturbing creature. It appears to be part human, but definitely has something else going on. As you'll see, its hands are elongated with sharp claws. I slowed down the game trying to get a better look at this guy as he pounces. Nothing was happening though. However, I noticed something clipping through the ground and realized it was the same creature underground. It then moves up right in front of our character. You'll notice that this is a second model of the creature that is attacking us. This skinless creature is a thing of nightmares, and thank goodness it disappears quickly. Other than shopping carts moving on their own, and another pot machine on site, that's all I came across at the mini mart. So I head back to the start by screaming to death. The farm is the last location that is on this four-way sign that we've yet to go to, so I begin heading out that way. On my way over, I decided to take a left from here instead though. I thought I had seen something off in the distance, and sure enough, it was something indeed. It was a few picnic tables and a mannequin. Intrigued, I approached it and quickly realized that there are many other similar figures lingering here in this area. This is the first time I came across these figures. You can see this one in a pose as its head draws away from me and then suddenly snaps back. There's another I found. Um, I'll just leave that one to your imagination. I felt like they were moving with me. So I altered the camera and as you can see, they do in fact teleport around the player. The teleporting is only based on where the player is looking. In the midst of discovering these figures, I see an RV in the distance and decide to head over there. The figures follow for a little while, but eventually stop. As I'm approaching the vehicle, it honks at me. We can clearly see that no one is inside though. I found another victim on the other side of the RV, but that was about it. I tried interacting with the vehicle, and to my surprise, I was able to just clip right through it. Who needs doors when your RV is a ghost? I imagine they'll fix this in a future update. At this point, I took a break and came back to the game later to check out those mannequins again. To my disappointment, they were nowhere to be found. The only conclusion I could come up with is that they spawn in different locations on the map each time the game loads. Or perhaps they were a part of the Halloween decorations and are now gone. Because I combed this forest trying to find them again and just had zero luck. 
let's talk about that farm now. The farm, as you probably guessed, has a very similar theme going on as the rest of the locations we've visited. There's blood basically everywhere, and it's a horror show. Amongst all the dead bodies within the barn, it was one body in particular that caught my attention. In the far corner of the barn, there's an astronaut suit. I thought it may just be the suit, but after taking a peek inside, you'll see that there is definitely a corpse within. How did Major Tom end up in a barn room massacre though? Another question would be, what exactly was capable of taking a bite of this size out of a charred cow? Good lord! Oh hey, looky here. There's a pretty cool looking scarecrow near the farm. And, you know, I love scarecrows. I tried seeing if it would interact with me or pursue me while walking away, but nothing happened initially. I then tried backing away as far as I could with it still in sight, and noticed that it did end up moving? I don't know if it was bad timing or what, but I know I wouldn't have seen it move like that in the normal view. It disappears shortly after, and never returns during my visit here at the farm. Must have run off to wishlist my Scarecrow Horror Game Zardy's Maze 2 on Steam. Ha, <laughs> ha, yeah, right? Got him. Anyways, there's a house on this farm, so I of course wanted to check it out and go inside. Sadly, the door seems to be locked, hinting that it could open with a key. So I just mod my way inside. It's pitch black in here, so I brighten it up for a better look. There's a lone couch in the middle of the house, with not much else going on in here. However, there's a cassette player in here, just like the other two we found before. Clicking this one plays the following. What you heard just plays and repeats and never stops. I don't know if I perhaps broke a sequence bypassing the locked door, but I couldn't find anything else noteworthy here. So it's now time to do some free roam adventuring around this map, and then we'll tackle all the random jump scares. As I wandered around this forest, I found an isolated shack that appears to be abandoned. It sort of reminds me of Jason's little home from Friday the 13th, just in slightly better shape. Of course, we're not going to be finding Jason's mother's head and sweater in here. As a matter of fact, there's nothing in this structure, minus a small tree clipping through the floor. The door cannot be interacted with. Moving on, something else I found on my long walk was this random bloodied up staircase. It leads to nowhere, and there's not much else to it. I instantly recognize this staircase though, as it mimics an image that used to circulate around a liminal spaces groups. A cool nod to something eerie. That aside though, remember that random astronaut we found in the barn at the farm? Well, turns out this individual wasn't alone. I ended up coming across the capsule they traveled in. Close by is a second crew member sitting against the tree, and apparently they were on a mission regarding Mars. Someone definitely took a wrong turn to end up here, but I thought this was pretty cool to see. There is a third astronaut, a little ways from the landing site, who appears to have been possibly crawling away before dying. Not far from this landing site is another plane crash site. However, it's not a big commercial plane. It appears to be an old military plane. There are two of them in this area, and there were no bodies I could find near the crash sites. If I had to make an educated guess, it looks like a doctored up P-51. I can't say for sure though. My last and biggest find definitely makes you scratch your head with how exactly it got here. It's a giant tanker ship? I'm getting vibes from the cancelled show 1899. Rest in peace, you were great. I explored inside with the camera and it seems that there's no way to go within the ship on foot. I did notice the model of the ship pokes through the base of the map though. Oh yeah, there is this underground world below the map, which looks pretty cool. Nothing is down here that we can interact with though. I noticed I was close to the edge of the map, so I of course started heading towards it. As you approach closer to the edge, the screen will flicker, and you can clearly see that you're somewhere completely new. Zooming out from where I am currently shows that I'm on the other side of the map, because remember, I was by the large ship. So the map loops by this warping mechanic. I head back to the ship area because I figured this would be a nice open spot to get a better look at the jump scares that follow you throughout the game. Before getting started, I get some lighting set up so you can see a bit easier. Not every jump scare may show up in one playthrough, so I'm going to be doing this a few times. First up, a deer spawns behind me. Mind you, I set the camera up already to watch my character, so I can try and catch these jump scares in action, as they happen very quickly. So normally this deer is supposed to appear as it's running past you, being fast and loud. It'll run out of the player's normal view and then despawn. There are a few other animals that will do the same action, including a large moose, a warthog, and a dog, all of which run a straight path, eventually despawning. Not long after the deer, we have a visitor. It appears to be a giant spider that will run across the player's view. 
it's fair to say there probably aren't enough bolts in our character's non-functioning gun to stop the spider. Similar to the other animals, it would just run off and out of the player's sight and despawn. Another spider interaction that occurs involves a lot more spiders. They will all spawn in front of you as they all begin to close in on our character and despawn abruptly. Moving on though, my next encounter involves a bunch of crows randomly flying out of the ground. It's sort of bizarre looking. They shoot directly up into the sky and eventually fly in place, where they then unload. Following this murder of crows, the next jump scare is a single crow that will appear directly in front of the player as it beams towards them. It will fly through our character and continue on for a bit, eventually despawning. Almost immediately after the crow, our scarecrow friend appears in front of us. If you remember, this is the same scarecrow from the farm. Listen as it peers into our soul. It will linger for a bit, but eventually disappears. Seems like we're on a streak here with our crow encounters. Because they're back, but this time they're falling from the sky. Up above you can see them materializing before us. After they all fall down, which is bizarre to watch, I notice there are a few crows that are frozen in place from where they're spawning. And they end up remaining there for the rest of this instance. With the next scare, a figure spawns in front of us. It looks to be a woman in a wedding dress. She appears to be sad as she continuously whimpers. If you don't approach her, she'll just disappear. However, drawing near her will cause her to do a deathly scream. Her appearance is intense, with her bloodied hands and overgrown nails. Perhaps someone several years late to their wedding reception. The scream is not long, and once done, she despawns. The next occurrence has similarities to the previous. It's a small, old lady though, whom, um, I'm not gonna lie, looks like she's about to execute Order 66 from Star Wars. It's a terrifying situation up close, but it gets worse. She levitates up into the air and does a death screen of her own. Like the bride, she disappears after her scream. So after she's gone, I get real lucky and freeze the game just in time, as this lightning fast demon comes out of nowhere. Managing to catch it before despawning, you can see that it generates in front of the player, leaping very quickly towards them. This thing is horrific looking, with many razor sharp teeth. If we go under and look at its belly, we'll see a giant open wound going vertically across the center of its torso. It truly is a thing of nightmares. It then disappears after jumping through the player. Now, I thought I had an encounter with this same creature before, when this corpse that is split down the middle approached me. It's hard to say with it having no head, but the subtle differences have me convinced it's two separate creatures. This one, however, will make a dramatic exit as it slowly swells up, eventually exploding. Continuing on though, as I dance around, my next encounter is sort of funny. It's a headless woman that will creepily walk towards the player and then vanish. Now that in itself isn't what's funny. It's the fact that it's able to, well, take a listen. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! I'm sorry my friend, you're in over your head. How are you speaking to me right now, you headless corpse? So the next scare looks like something from the Ring movies. Getting a closer look, I realize it's actually the ghost lady we encountered in the cockpit of the plane. In a contorted manner, she will continuously crawl towards the player and eventually despawn. I had what I thought was another interaction with the mutilated plane ghost, but with a couple noticeable differences. This one has a big witch-like nose, and she doesn't have a metal bar going through her stomach. Like the rest though, she'll come screaming towards you before despawning. There's another encounter that involves another creepy woman spawning behind you. Her hair covers her face, looking as if she has crawled out of her well herself. As you walk, she will stalk you. A way to know if she's behind you is if you listen carefully, you'll be able to hear her breathing. When approaching one of the many wells, this same lady will come crawling out in a very similar fashion to the Ring movie. Regardless, it's enough to get one's blood pumping. The next entity that shows up is the bride again, and she appears to be dancing. She is crying as she dances, but has flowers in her hair this time around. She will continue this dance for a bit, and in time, eventually disappear. I also encountered another doomed bride-to-be, except this one is much more gruesome looking as you can see. Her face has clearly seen better days. She too dances about, but is levitating as well, making it that much more creepy. As I continue on, I end up encountering some shadow-like ghosts with my flashlight. You can simply walk through them. This was my only time encountering these shadows. As I wait for the next attack, you'll see this next entity come right out of the ground. In normal view, this jump scare is right in front of the player's face and happens very quickly. 
This one is another long-haired, long-nailed demon lady that screams in our face. There are a couple of other similar jump scares that do occur, just like this one though, including the bride we've seen before. Except this time she has fangs, which is curious. And then there's another dead looking lady that does it. Maybe this is a passenger from the plane? I had another encounter with her later on, but wasn't fast enough of getting a closer look at her. Oh, and remember our skinless friend of the Minimart? It too performs this jump scare right in the player's face. Isn't it so handsome? Oof. One of the last encounters I had was a track star molten demon. This dude had to have been in a metal band in his previous life. Take a listen. It too will sprint towards the player to try to scare them. Successfully beating the game will congratulate the player and show the amount of scares you survived. I definitely recommend checking this game out. On screen now, I have an overview map of the forest. So if you want to check out the areas I explored and marked, this should make it a little easier. Not to mention, there could be more in which I didn't find. There you have it though. This concludes our game breaking experience in Don't Scream. But anyways, go wander in the forest, get spooked, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.